Hi sweeties, how are you doing? Welcome to Naya Sim. If this is your first time of coming across this channel, sweetheart, kindly smite that subscribe button and turn on your notification so you are notified each time I upload and please give this video a thumb up. I appreciate you all so much and I am saying massive shout out to every one of you for all the love and support you all give me. I am truly grateful. Thank you all so much. You all are so sweet. So this video actually talked about the unification of black people how white people do not actually want to see black people unify because they know how horrible it is going to be for them when everyone comes together and uh like we want to build one another establish one another and then stand together and fight that classism they made because he was like he went by saying that he doesn't even think the main thing or the problem is race but the, the, the major thing right now is to dismantle that classism they built, right? Because if we are able to dismantle that classism they built, we are going to beat them. But number one is that they are actually like, they have always been scared. I don't even know why they have always been scared. I mean, they are always in fear. And why are they in fear? Do you know how long it took them to strike wall street you know actually they gave wall street away to black people like wall street was like you know like a barren land or like a land that was not like you know it was just empty which was given to black people black people took that land and built it i mean it took them years to make that to turn that place into a great place and now let me tell you why they turned that uh, wall street into a great place there were other other uh, commu white communities which could not even uh, compete with Wall Street. And do you know how long it took them to strike the Wall Street? It took them like 15 years. I mean, when the land is already flourishing, people are grown, banked. I mean, what not? It was a flourishing community. And they looked at it and they were like, no, we cannot stand them. We want to take over everything from us. You know what? I am just going to roll this clip. We'll come back to talk about it. And I absolutely want to read all your comments. Let me know what you all think in the comment section. And straight up, I am rolling this. Straight facts, no chaser. This is for my black brothers and sisters. I want you guys to understand something. I have been educating about black brilliance on the B side for years now providing all the information that I've either found or discovered or was told to me by much more brilliant people. And I did my research on every last one of them to be able to present facts and not fiction and not just my feelings, although those came through a lot of times when it comes to how our people were treated, you can't help but feel a certain way. Now, I believe our great leaders of the past who fought for civil rights and equal rights and women's rights and all kinds of rights, but mostly based on race, have did a valiant job. But I want you guys to think a little deeper, just a little bit, than race. Let me give you a little history and how I came about this that made it kind of click for me. I have talked about Black Wall Street countless times, and I did my homework on the reality of how long did it take, how long did it last. You see, it started around 1906 and ended in 1921. So that's 15 years. And I thought about it after a while from the idea and the standpoint of how this brilliant man, O.W. Gurley, pieced this all together and went from land that was bare, made to be worthless from white people. That's why they gave it to black people and turned it into a black oasis, an economic juggernaut the surrounding white communities couldn't compete with. Then I thought about why did it take them 15 years when they saw black men and women owning banks and flying their own planes and wealth just growing crazily? Why did it take them 15 years? I know a lot of people say, oh, that one incident where the black kid touched a white girl or whatever on the elevator. Nah, nah, I truly don't believe it's that. That may have been the catalyst, but that's not the reason. You got to think about it. They hated black people. But yet, they say, go on your own, do your own thing. They'd rather you be a slave or enslaved to them by being an employee than being an entrepreneur and doing your own damn thing, right? So when these people started to show them that they didn't need white people and they were succeeding more than the white people in their communities nearby, that was a threat. Now, ask yourself, did these people just suddenly turn black? 
that these racists just suddenly realized, hey, we don't like them. No. So race was always there. What wasn't there was class. They didn't think of black people as a class being worthy of anything. They thought they had suckered them in buying barren land. Let them do what they're going to do. They ain't going to do nothing but just rip it up, tear it apart. But O.W. Gurley and the brilliant black brothers and sisters of those days showed them what we were working with, truly working with, when we didn't need their economics, that we didn't need their support. We were succeeding beyond the neighboring white communities. Now, think about this for a second. Politically, poor and some of the middle class, the lower end of the middle class, white people should know that rich white people never gave a fuck about them. You wouldn't catch a billionaire hanging out with a middle class or poor white person, much less even talking about them. So they use keywords, tax breaks and all these different things that they use to trigger them, to let them know we're, we're working for you. We're not going to go down and hang out with you, but we're working for you. So while I was walking the other day, I realized something. Poor white people in a portion of the middle class know they're voting against what we consider to be their interest. See, coming from a, a person who has a equality mindset, no matter what race you are, it seems like crazy. They're voting against their interest. But if you come at it from a classism aspect, they're voting for their interest. We're looking through equality goggles. They're looking through supremacy goggles. We don't speak supremacy. Therefore, we don't understand their fears, their anger. See, race was created to just separate the poor white people and other cultures coming together and overthrowing the rich. There's less of them than there are of us. So their brilliant plan is to always divide. And poor white people know if they don't hitch their wagon to the rich white people, and somehow black people and people of color rise, they become the new n****. That's why they're so afraid of letting black people rise. That's why they don't want affirmative action. That's why they don't want reparations because black people rise. And when we rise, you notice, we get closer to the rich. And the rich, once black people and people of color are wealthier than the poor whites, then they no longer can sell to them. What one of the presidents said, I think in the 60s or something like that. If you can convince the lowest white man he's better than the best colored man, he won't notice you're picking his pocket. Hell, give him somebody to look down on, and he'll empty his pockets for you. I'm telling you, we've been fighting the racism. We should be fighting the classism. How do we do that? Unify. The thing they hate the most, they fear the most, is black unification. Because if we unite and bring our people up and let ourselves shine like we know we can, just judged on the past, the poor white people can't handle it. Because in effect, the rich will abide by the rich. It's not about race because that was made up. It's about class and holding on to it. Race is a part of it, but that's the division part of it. If you go back in history, race didn't exist, but classism did. Mm. I think if we fight classism by investing in one another, giving ourselves the opportunity, we defeat racism. Or it just shifts to poor white people. I look at it this way. They've had their chance to change it and get behind the plan. Now they should be able to fill the raft of what rich white people really think of them when we rise. I speak facts. Straight facts. Fuck your feelings. I would love to move on. Like, I would super love to live in a country and in a world where racism was not like a constant thing that we have to talk about all the time because it's everywhere. But in order to get there, we have to pay reparations. And the inequity that inevitably occurred when some people were literally just taking the wages of other people and just exploiting the labor. Um, that inequality continues to today. And there is no way to move on without rectifying that. And electing Obama doesn't count. Reparations. So yeah, this no. is all I got from this video. And I must say that this brother really uh, broke everything down. And I love how he broke it down. And uh, see, I keep saying this. They knew from the onset that black people, I mean, like, you know, whatever you give to a black person, 
I mean, they always look for a way to turn it to gold. That's why most times when they want to like, you know, like they give black people barren land. And for them, they think nothing is ever going to come out from this land. And what? That same land, they turned it into something really great, of which they were really super scared. Like I keep saying, this is just the beginning. They will never stop being scared. And yeah, that is it. Because like, how are you even people scared? How are you people scared? I mean, they are so scared that black people are going to wake up one day, like, you know, rise and shine and like, you know, be way super than them, control them and like, you know, take all the spaces and all that. Do you people really know how long it took them to struggle at Wall Street? It's something they really masterminded because from the outside, they already saw the land they gave black people and they are like, wait. We thought this land is going to be very useless for them. They are not going to make up something. But then they saw great things growing and coming out from that same story. They thought it was not going to amount to something. They became very scared. And now this is also part of the reason why they have been dancing around on reparations. They feel like, oh my goodness, by the time we pay this for these reparations, I don't know what is going to happen. This is one of the reasons why they want to keep black people where they are and where they have been to this very moment. That's why they look for a way to control some certain things through labor, through uh, housing and all that. You know, there are places black people are not supposed to live or there are places uh, white people are supposed to live. Black people are not supposed to come there and the rest of it, redlining and the rest of it, right? But then... The truth is that this reparation is definitely going to happen, whether they like it or not. And why are they scared of being the bottom? Like I said before, what they give out, you can imagine, like, it's just really horrible. How you know that you are giving somebody something that is not good. I like, I am giving you something. I know that thing is not good for you. And I continuously giving it to you. And then when it is time for you to return that same thing I give to you, I am being scared. You all haven't seen shit. Trust me. Whatever you did to black people, you definitely will get it in folds. Because like, you know, it's all gonna... But the truth is that black people are not violent. Because if black people are really violent with all the things I have read and seen, black history and all that, trust me, they would have woken up one day and said, we are no longer going to take all this from you. And whatever you want, if it is by pew pew and all that, we are ready for you. But the truth is that black people do not even want their stress. All they want is just for them to dismantle that stupid system they mounted that is destabilizing them because they mounted a system that is of no good to black people so in that system they are actually the king the ones benefiting from the same system and that system is not favoring black people and for you to be favored you have to like work 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 and work i mean you know, this is where I'm going to draw the cut. And thank you so much for all the love and support. See you all in my next video. Bye for now.